the 2022 February Contest Bronze Problem, Sleeping in Class. And this is also one of the hard problems from the Yusuko Bronze Division Basic Complete Search. So basically, Cal was excited to recently return to in-person learning. Unfortunately, her, farm, her instructor, Farmer John, is a very boring lecturer, and so she ends up following and sleeping in class often. Farmer John has noticed that Bessie has not been paying attention in class. He asked another student in class, Elsie, to keep track of the number of times Bessie falls asleep in a given class. There are n class periods, and Elsie logs that Bessie falls asleep ai times in the ith class period. The total number of times Bessie falls asleep across all class periods is at most 10 to the power of 6. Bess Elsie, feeling very competitive with Bessie, wants to make Farmer John feel like Bessie is consistently falling asleep the same number of times in class, making it appear that the issue is entirely Bessie's fault, with no dependence on Farmer John's sometimes boring lectures. The only way Elsie may modify the logs is by combining two adjacent class periods. For example, if A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then Elsie combines the second and third class periods, the log will make 1, 4, 5. Help Elsie compute the minimum number of modifications to the log that she needs to make so that she can make all the numbers in the log equal. So we're given test cases, so this is T test cases and then some arrays. So, for example, 3, 6, and then 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1, 3, 2, 2, 2, 3, Five zero 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 zero. Okay, so with this problem, if we take a look at the way that they're solving it, we notice that for each of them, they almost know beforehand what that equal number is going to be. So in this case, they know that the number is going to be 3. In this one, 7. And in this one, obviously 0. So suppose that we know the number that we want to get everything to equal. Suppose we know the number, and suppose that number is, so for example in this case, suppose we choose it's 3. Then what we could do is we could add 1 to 2 to get 3, and then we'd have 3, and then add these 3 to also get 3. And so that would result in a total of 3 modifications. So if we know the number, the, the, the number of equality, it shouldn't be too hard to check if that number works. All we have to do is we just have to keep adding until we get that number and then move on to the next. And then keep adding until we get the number and move on to the next. And if we don't get that number, if we get an, if we keep adding and then suddenly we go from a number lower to a number higher, we know that that um, equality number doesn't exist is not valid. So for instance, if we had 2, 2, 3 and we said our equality number was 3, we'd start with 2, we'd add 2 and get 4. But 4 is greater than 3, so it doesn't work. And in this case, the uh, equality is 7. So what should we do? Well, what we, what we should do is try and see how do we get the number, the, the equality numbers. So your first instinct might just be to go with, okay, let's, instead of doing anything, all we can do is just go for every single possible equality number and that would be 10 to the power of 6. So 10 to the power of 6 equality numbers, but then note that there are 10 to the power of 5 class periods, so that would be about 10 to the power of 5 times 10 to the power of 6 is 10 to the power of 11 iterations, which is just way too much. So what can we do? Well, note that after each operation that we take, we're always the sum of the numbers always remains the same. So what do I mean? Let's take a look here at this notepad. Suppose we were considering 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 1. When we do any operation, note that the sum of these numbers is um, 9. When we do an operation, for instance, we combine 2 and 3, we get 1, 5, 1, 1, 1. And this also gives us a sum of 9. So the sum is always constant. But in the ending, we have 3, 3, 3. And that sum is 9. Some, that, that the sum of those numbers is, again, 9. So what do we know? Well, we know that our equality number is going to be a divisor of the sum. And that's the crucial part. So we have this equality number, uh, th this, uh, this um, sum, and we know that the equality number is going to be a divisor. 
So what we can do is we can iterate over all possible divisors of this number. And this is a mathematical fact, but the number of divisors of a number tends to be around log that number. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not too clear why that is, but you can just take it as a ground truth that that's the way it is. So we could iterate over all divisors of the number, and we would end up with... Um, we could end. We would end up with our answer, but iterating over all divisors of a number can be pretty challenging. So what we do is we do an, a square root based algorithm. So essentially, we check is one a divisor, which it obviously is, and then is two a divisor, it's not, and then three, and then four, and we only go up all the way to the square root of that number, because when we check one, we can also check nine. And when we check 3, we can also check 3. And that covers all divisors. What do I mean? Well, note that when I check a, where a is less than square root of n, or square root of sum, we can also check b, where b is equal to sum divided by a is greater than the square root of sum. So we've checked both everything less than the square root of the sum and everything greater than the square root of the sum. So we have checked all of the possible divisors in square root of the sum time complexity. Square root of the sum, that's square root of 10 to the power of 6 at most, which is the square root of, which is 10 to the power of 3. And so this algorithm would run in about 10 to the power of 3 times 10 to the power of 5, which is 10 to the power of 8. And 10 to the power of 8 would pass within time limit it should take under two seconds. So let's see how exactly you would implement this. For this problem, I'm going to take a look at the Yusuko's solution for this. So here's the code. So the code for this, what we do is obviously we, we um, use, a, use a, a code forces style um, test case based input. So what do I mean by that? I mean, typically in code forces problems, there will be um, t test cases. And the way that most people will do it is they'll read in uh, the number of test cases and then create a function called solve and run with that function solve. So inside the solve function, we read in our n and our vector array, and we also compute the sum. And now we take a look from r is equal to n, r is greater than or equal to 1, r minus minus. So what they're doing here is they are they're going from a large value of r to a lower value of r. So this, it's a little bit confusing to understand what, what's going on here. But essentially what's going on is they're running the same square root algorithm that we were doing. So let's take a look. r is equal to n, r is greater than or equal to 1, r minus minus. Some if sum of a percent r is equal to 0, in target sum is equal to sum of a divided by r. Cur sum is 0, ok is true. And then for i to n, what they do is they would... Oh, actually, wait, they're doing r is equal to n. Ah, yes, sorry. Clarification on this, what they're doing here. They're iterating over n, where n is the number of... Um, the number of divide uh, the number of numbers. Why are they doing this? Okay, so yeah, actually, I should explain this probably. Um, so the algorithm that I described is uh, a square root algorithm, but what they're doing is instead of iterating over every divisor, they're iterating over the number of possible numbers. So remember, here I said we iterate for the maximum for for the equality number. Instead, they're iterating for the number of equality numbers. That's what they're doing. So just a clarification on that. And again, that will run same logic that'll run in square root time complexity. And you could definitely do it this way too, um, and that would run just fine as well. So we get the target sum, we get the current sum, um, and what we're doing is essentially we're saying bool ok is equal to true, and we're iterating. So cur sum plus equals a of i. And so what this means is we're adding the current sum. If the current sum is greater than the target, then we can't split the array into r elements. And so again, same thing here. 
if, for instance, we accidentally went from, if we had 2 to 4 and the target sum was 3, and we went um, to, uh, we, we combined the first two and we got 4, 3, well, that would be a problem, wouldn't it? Because 4 is greater than 3. So that's essentially what this case is checking. And then they check, if the current sum is equal to the target sum, then we started a new range. Now we start a new range. And that's the same thing here. So we would do 3 for the first sum, 3, 1, 1, 1. And now note, again, this is a sum of 9. And now note that this 3 right here, this range, this 1 to 2 range, gives us a valid sum. And so we continue like that. And so they run this algorithm and then they check if we can successfully create groupings such that the sum of each the sum of the numbers in each grouping is equal to the target sum, then we know that we can use that target sum. And so they're saying if it's okay, we output n minus r. Now you might be wondering, well why do we output n minus r? The reasoning for why we output n minus r is because we have to output the smallest number. Remember, right here, minimum number of modifications. Number of modifications you would use in this, well, that's going to be n minus r modifications. Because remember, that goes back to we've chosen here that r is the number of modifications we're going to do. R is, well, we've chosen r is the number of numbers, right? Number of numbers remaining. We've chosen r is going to be, for example, 3 in this case. And since r is going to be 3, we know the number of modifications to get to r is 3 is going to be n minus r. That's going to be, um, there are 6 numbers, so 3. So that's why they're outputting n minus r. Now obviously, you can't go any smaller than n minus r, because r is decreasing, so n minus r is going to increase. So that's why they're doing this. And this right here runs in time complexity O of n. And then it will run this right here, this thing. This, so this, this right here runs in O of n. And it should run this at worst case, worst case, it'll run this entire thing, um, the number of divisors less than n of the sum, which can go up to all of its divisors, should go around 2 times the square root of n. So it's it should run in time, and it does run in time. So yeah, that's essentially how you would do sleeping in class, the bronze problem. Um, here is, once again, all of the kind of logic. It's a bit messy, but essentially, the way that they do it is they go over the number of minimum numbers, or, or equal numbers, and then check, can we get that number of min equal numbers? Because they know that given the number of equal numbers, we can calculate what that actual equal number is. And the other way you can do it is iterate over what's the value of the equal number, and then try and do that, and that will give you same time complexity. All right, so if you guys did enjoy, uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, it really means a lot. We hit 50 subscribers recently. I think I'm at 58 now. And it, it really means a lot to me to see this channel growing and people using this. I'm going to make it my goal to continue to work through the Bronze Use Ago Guide and create video editorials for um, most of the hard problems for each section. And so, obviously, if you guys are enjoying, if this is helpful, please leave a like on this video. It tells me that you guys are interested in this, and it tells me to keep on doing this. And with that, I'll see you all in another video.